You must be that which you seek. I am the violet flame. I am the violet flame. I am the violet flame. Know it and you will be it. And magic will create in your reality. It is all perception. Fifth dimension isn't a place you're going. It is a state of consciousness. You are changing your perception from a third dimension to a fifth dimension as you awaken. You are not leaving the planet. You are not going anywhere. It is a state of consciousness. Change your perception and you will change your life. Uh, blessings. Tara Arnold, St. Germain, welcome on the podcast. What are you most excited about right now in your life? Well, right now, I'm excited, really excited to be here. Thank you for having me on, Emilio. And my inner child this morning kept showing me a birthday party hat, which means that she is getting ready for something big. So I get a lot of signs that there's going to be shifts. Um, I get a lot of signs from my inner child when uh, something big's happening. So universally, the energies have been a little bit bumpy in the month of September and then going into October, they seem to be um, leveling out. And now I feel like there's uh, something big coming, like some big shifts universally. And also for those who have expanded their consciousness that have been working on expanding their consciousness. Um, yeah, just expect something uh, wonderful to happen. <laughs> yes, yes. I think something big is coming for not only everyone as individuals, but for humanity as a whole. And to give people sort of historical context, in May, on May 1st, uh, 1954, Saint Germain and his twin flame Portia were anointed to direct the consciousness of mankind for this 2000 year period that we're entering into and master jesus which was the master of the prior um 2000 year period alongside with buddha gave him the crown of authority so tuning into that what is in your perspective humanity going through in this next 2000 year period with saint germain being a head to direct this consciousness now so St. Germain is coming to a lot of people right now. If you are drawn to him, if you see his name somewhere, if his name keeps showing up or his photo, or you're starting to see the violet flame in your third eye, then that means he's already working with you on some level. So he's he shows me that he comes for the Aquarian age to assist all of humanity in to finding the truth within themselves and not needing anything outside themselves. So he's going to be um, connecting with a lot of people that are viewing this or watching this or listening to this uh, show today, because if you're drawn to this video, then you're already connecting with him on some level. So mm -hmm. yeah, just know that and expect it and he will show up in your reality and he will guide you for the Aquarian age and help to empower you to not need anything outside of yourself. So anything that we seek outside ourselves for love or happiness, it's as we awaken, the ego consciousness is getting shattered of that and he assists with that and helps you to find the power within yourself, so. And just like a lot of new children coming in right now, you grew up receiving messages and you were also very sensitive as a child. Um, I guess, through that journey, you sort of toned that down in the beginning phases of your life where you went out, you know, just like me into the party scene, um, dealt with other things like addiction, as you mentioned. And then you went into nursing for 12 years. You were going into that, but then found natural energy healing. And there was a moment where you were doing a session for a client and Saint Germain came in and blended his energy with you. If you wanna tell us a little bit more about that time uh, in your life. Yeah, so it was about the time that um, I had been receiving messages like for my clients, 
Um, and it was Jesus that came in first. And then I think because of my Catholic upbringing and um, just not wanting to upset you know, family and the judgment on it. Um, it was like if I was to start a YouTube channel, it wouldn't be messages for for somebody that was going to, you know, get judged on like Jesus or, um, hmm. you know, Mother Mary or something. So I kept a lot of those messages to myself. I would give some to the clients and then one day the clients stopped coming and so i was like why am i not getting clients and they're like well if you're not going to give our messages then we're not going to send the clients so then i said well how do i know if they are open to receiving it and they said well we won't bring in the message unless they are so once i felt comfortable with that i would start giving messages and then i saw that i wasn't going to get attacked um that it was safe and it's all these old past lifetime religious, you know, beliefs and stuff that was preventing me from stepping out. And then St. Germain came in one day and I was working with a client and she actually resonated with his energy a lot. She had had a past lifetime with him that if like if he showed me after. So she was quite comfortable with it. He came in and it was like, I couldn't even move. Like his energy was so big. He felt like a thousand pounds. He was like 20 feet tall. And you could see landed. him as well, right? What did he look like? I see him in my like third eye. And sometimes I'll see the guides like outside of me, but it's usually like in my third eye. Hmm. Um, like, with mother mary i saw her like standing outside of me or and giving me a message or um jesus a few times shows up as like a like really bright yellow um divine light and he just like shows up outside of me but saint germain it's like in the third eye but i feel him like when he blends his energies with mine he doesn't overtake my body he blends into my auric fields. And then I can feel how he sits. I can feel how he moves, uh, how he breathes. It feels like their lungs. It doesn't feel like my lungs when I'm channeling. Like, So they mm. blend in. And so this one day he came and he said, hi, I'm St. Germain. This is how I'm gonna be working with you. And then he shot um, divine light like through my chakras to the client. It was like she felt it in her heart as it was coming through my heart chakra. So then yeah. after she left, um, I was like not really believing. I was like, what just happened? So then I had, I brought my husband in and I was like, okay, St. Germain, come in again. Like, can you show me how you're gonna be working with me? And he shot energy through like all of my chakras as he was doing it with my husband. So. He said, the, how we're working with you is we're going to bring through divine light through your chakras to the client or the audience and transmute dark back to light and fears back to love. And how they show it, it's like everything's like now stacked moments. So all our past mm -hmm. lifetimes are happening now. So a lot of times they'll go to the root emotion of a past lifetime and then it comes up through all the other lifetimes and transmutes. So it's like it it's almost like it erases like the pain from the past and then you'll just feel lighter after you'll feel happier um, more joy more clarity depending on what chakra that they're bringing through frequencies so today in in this session today um when i'm channeling they will be bringing through frequencies if you're open to receiving them as a viewer or as a listener then you can just state you're open to receiving them it's always up to your spirit spirit and what you wish to release so your spiritual body brings to the surface what it wants transmuted and then the sanda masters channel through my chakras and transmute it so it's always up to you you're always in charge um and all you have to do is say you're open to receiving hmm. now yeah. saint germain he has the reason that he is called an ascended master is because he has already lived multiple and many lifetimes here on this planet on earth and you know, doing my research on his lifetime and many different lifetimes he's had, sort of the last incarnate, incarnated one was that of Francis Bacon, the alchemist, and, you know, this uh, genius in that time of the 17th century. And 
sort of what I understand is that that's the aspect that you are channeling of Saint Germain. Uh, am I right? Um, well, he comes to me as Saint Germain, like he was named after a town in France. So um, that's the aspect that um, I do see like a, a other aspects of him, like Francis Bacon and stuff, but the actual energy that I feel is him as Saint Germain when he lived in the town of Saint Germain mm. in France. Um, I guess he got the name from, you know, from being in that town yeah. is how I see it. That's how he shows up to me. Huh. So yeah and yeah. he was a he was an alchemist at that time right well what, what sort of things was he doing um yeah in the so town, he shows me working like with people the spiritual alchemy is how he shows me um it's like magic so it's like you know he had a lifetime of merlin as well and so for him like when i ask him about the alchemy he just teaches me how to do spiritual alchemy which is transmuting um one energy into another energy form so it's like magic so it's like over the years he's just given me tips on how to um kind of manifest things out of thin air like so it, once it starts happening it's just the belief gets there and it's mm -hmm. yeah it's more like spiritual alchemy is how he shows me not um like not turning metals into gold. He yes. says it's more of a, he was a spiritual alchemist, but then people would say that he was more of a like chemist, but he's like showing me it's more spiritually. He could transmute frequency because everything's a vibrational frequency. So he transmuted frequencies and created a different reality because he was more in a fifth dimension perspective and everybody else was in this deep, dense third dimension. Hmm. Yeah. And you mentioned that when he was coming through, he was also teaching you how to create things and manifest things into your reality. So I'm really curious to know when you began to learn from Saint Germain in this way, what activated in you and what sort of things around you in your outer reality started to shift? Yeah, so for anybody who's listening that wants to do this, start with something small. So he's just going to, I'm just gonna like kind of teach what he showed me. So start with something small. So like say a parking space. So um, put the intention that when you, everywhere you go that you'll get the best parking space. And then at the beginning, you're not gonna have the belief and that's okay. They don't want you to worry about that. All they need you to do is not doubt. So it's like, um, you can come when you command you evoke the god within you to create your reality or, or you evoke the universe within you to create your your reality so start to command that you get the best parking space and you can if you want you can bring in spirit guides to work with or you can just you know work with universal energy and state it that it's going to happen and then once it does, then the belief will be there. The key is to not doubt. So if you don't doubt, then it shows up. And it's, it's once that, like you do something small like that. So it's like, oh, everywhere I go, I get the best parking space. So the universe just lines that up really easily. It's something simple that it's easy to manifest. And then once that belief is there, you can start doing it with, you know, bigger items or, um, like you can do it with illness. So he shows yeah. me a lot. Like if you call in um, your higher self and Saint Germain to evoke the violet flame of transmutation. So Saint Germain brings in this violet flame that is within all of us. So it's before, you know, 50 years ago, everything was so dense on planet Earth. You had to like say all these mantras to evoke the violet flame. But now we're all consciously expanded enough or awake enough that we have access to it without having to go into deep meditation or into a you know a mantra so you can mm -hmm. evoke that within yourself by commanding your higher self and saint germain evoke the violet flame of transmutation and transmute all dark back to light or fears back to love and if you have an illness then you can write it on a piece of paper 
and it goes by the vibrational frequency of the letters or the words. And then you just put the intention, like if you go to meditate or sit in a quiet space, you don't have to be a, a person who meditates in order to do this. Um, so if you're not a meditator, you don't have to be in that state. You just put the intention that I command my higher self in Saint Germain, evoke the violet flame of transmutation and balance the energy of the vibrational frequency of the words that I'm holding in my hand. So say that you have neck pain and you can look up the medical terminology for the muscles in the neck and the vertebrae and the discs and the nerves and the tendons and the ligaments and write those all down and then hold it in your hand and command that it be balanced for your highest good. Hmm. And at first it's the same thing. The belief's not going to be there. All you have to do is not doubt. And then one day you're going to do it and your neck pain like is instantly gone. And then the belief is there. And then anytime after that, it will work easier, faster. Um, sometimes there's layers to our emotions. So at the root of every illness, there's like a vibrational frequency of an emotion that needs to be transmuted. And sometimes, you know, our spirit wants to bring it to the surface, but the fears around that are, you know, difficult because of past lifetimes. So it might hang on to that emotion. So you might find some illnesses or some diseases, it's, it takes you longer because there's more layers, there's more emotions. If you can have an awareness of the root emotion, write that down and put that in your hand as well. To, to have transmuted because once that root emotions transmuted then the body will let go of the dis-ease <laughs> yeah it's really interesting that you're mentioning the power of commanding something into reality so it's like yeah. sort of if i were to say yo saint germain help me out with this leg cramp that i have this morning that's not a command what is the power of actually saying I command this energy, this electronic energy in my body to heal whatever cells and discordance there are within it. Why do we command rather than just simply ask like, hey, can you help me out with this, for example? That's a great question. So the if you're like everyone is always channeling, I want to start with that. So either we're channeling the ego consciousness or the heart centered consciousness. So if you are channeling from the ego, it's a third dimension reality, and you're gonna have fear-based messages coming in because you're in the ego consciousness. But if you're heart-centered and you're moving into a fifth dimension perspective, um, then you will channel in divine light. And when you do that, if you ask the universe like a question like, oh, can someone show up and help me heal? It's very vague. And when you ask the universe a vague question, the universe responds with vagueness. Mm -hmm. If you are saying, I want somebody to come and help me, then you are saying that you're not the universe. You're saying that you're something outside of the universe, but we it's are all awakening yeah, yeah, to remembering that we're not separate. So if you visualize like Jesus walking into a room, he wouldn't question his greatness. He would walk in, he would command somebody to be well and they would be well. So the Ascended Masters are saying, in order for you to create that in your reality, you must get in the vibration that we are. And so when you command, then you get to that frequency of being a co-creator. And when you command, it doesn't feel good to the ego because the ego wants you to channel from the head, not the heart. So the ego is gonna make you feel uncomfortable about saying the word command for probably about two months. Um, every time you say it, you're gonna feel guilt and shame because it's like these past lifetime religions and the ego's like, I'm gonna make you feel guilty. I don't want you to create your reality. So um, that's why they're saying like, say the word command and then you evoke the God within you to create your reality and you become a co-creator with the universe and then the universe can match that energy. So every time we channel, we start the vibration and spirit joins us or the universe joins us or God joins us, whatever terminology you wanna call it. It's everything's energy. So it's just, it joins the flow that we are. And if you're commanding then you're in the state of the frequency that the ascended masters would be in, then they can easily connect and they can help like propel that energy forward. Hmm. So yeah, commanding 
what you desire and and it's also if it's like if this is for my highest good so i command that um say i was you know going to manifest something so i would command the god within me to create that reality and if it's for my highest good it's going to show up but i don't attach to the outcome so that's another thing it's like it's like we're all the universe where there's no separation and it's god working through everyone in the way that god or the universe wants to work through everyone so whatever's mm -hmm. for your highest good is going to show up so command your reality don't attach to the outcome and let it go if it's for your highest good it'll show up for an example i was in a city i was shopping and i was like oh i think i might want to stay another night or drive home, but it was like four o'clock. It was gonna be dark by the time I get home. I was a couple hours away. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna have the universe decide. So I was at a casino or near a casino. So I was like, universe, can you show me if I'm supposed to stay another night or drive home? And then I walked in and as I was walking in, I got the number three and number red, or red, the color red and number three. And I walked up to the, roulette table and nobody was there. So I said, you know, I didn't even know how to play. So I was like asking them how to play. And I was like, okay, can I have um, red number three? And he said, well, you're gonna put, you know, things other places too. So I, I did that and then I won $240. So I was like, oh, that pays for the hotel room. It was like less wow. than a minute. Uh -huh. And so it was like, that's my sign that the universe wants me to stay another night. So it's, it's doing like, it's it, handing it to the universe as well. So you can command, you know, magic showing up. So everywhere I go, I expect magic to show up. And at the beginning, it's going to be like things that are off the wall to make you believe in the magic. So uh, um, tell the universe, show me something amazing. Show me something ridiculous. So show me something funny. Show me something off the wall. And then they will have something show up in your reality. Like I, I saw like an eagle and an owl sitting on like a post together. And I'm like, is that real? Like how can i be seeing this in my reality eagles and owls don't sit next to each other huh. and it was like within that i was like oh it, this is just in my reality it's what i've created in my fifth dimension perspective that this like off the wall magical really interesting stuff can show up i don't know if anybody else would have seen that because am i seeing it from a fifth dimension perspective and tapping into different dimensions and creating my reality from there. So it's like all these little things will give you the belief that magic can happen in your reality. And then fun things start showing up like like money flows in or just like really nice things like everywhere you go, people open doors or smile at you or, you know, you receive so much like like we you know just stop at a gas station i go in to pay and some, they're like oh somebody paid for your gas i'm like great that's awesome like just mm. magic showing up everywhere so that's yeah. what saint germain brings is is he helps you to tap into your spiritual alchemy and be the alchemist that you are because we are we are all alchemists we're all you know part of the universe so yes we are and it's almost like when we lock into a reality we limit that magic to come in um and saint germain he's really known for the i am presence and i just wanted to read you a quote from the i am discourses um, that i came across and this might actually be a question for saint germain if he feels comfortable coming through um, but it says when you say and feel i am you release the spring of eternal, everlasting life to flow on its way unmolested. In other words, you open wide the door to its natural flow. When you say, I am not, you shut the door in the face of this mighty energy. So I guess the question would be, what is that I am presence that we're actually commanding and tapping into? Okay, I'll just go into trance to channel that. Awesome, thank you. 
Oh yes, welcome. I am Saint Germain. We welcome you. We are showing our channel that it is becoming the frequency that you wish to create in your reality. If Tara goes to channel Saint Germain, she would say, I am Saint Germain. This as soon as she says I am Saint Germain, she becomes the translator and Saint Germain becomes the channel. This is because she becomes the frequency that she is seeking. What frequency are you seeking? Become that. Be it. I am. I am that I am. I am. When you say I am, you become that which you seek. What do you desire to be? Become that. Okay, so he's just showing me. It's like, I didn't even notice I did it. Like when I'm on my YouTube channel and I go to channel him, like the first thing he says is, um, well, it says welcome. Yeah. But then he says, I am St. Germain. He always says yes. that. And that's like, that's when it switches. It's like, he's the now the channel and I'm the translator. So um, yeah, it's getting into that frequency. So what is it that you are? Like, I am that, you become that. I don't know. It's like a light switch. Yeah. Yeah. And and that uh, that's a very mystical teaching as well, an al alchemical teaching, because I once heard that whatever comes after the words I am, you actually become. So this is just oh, wrapping awesome. ev everything you said into that one You know, lesson is a lot of the times we go into an experience or we go, we start our day and say, I am so tired. Or when someone's right. like done with whatever, they say, oh, I'm dead, like I'm so dead. And whenever we say that, it's like, what are we actually saying? And there's this power to words that maybe St. Germain can touch upon, like why are our words and the vibration that comes out of our mouth so key to creating our, our reality? That is an excellent point because um now that you said that, I don't think I pay attention to how often I'm saying stuff like that. So now that's going to help me too. Um, yeah, so he's showing me like a lot of words that I go to use, I go to channel. He backs me up. He says, no, we don't use that word because of the vibrational frequency of that. And it's I haven't done a channel on it yet, but there's a lot of our manners that it's like is sometimes taking people's power in the sense of um like like please please you know please help me it's it comes through like when i channel like if i channeled the word please it's a very uncomfortable vibration it mm -hmm. comes off as begging it's you know it's um or thank you, even the word thank you, like the word gratitude feels really, really good. The word thank you feels uncomfortable because it's almost like it has a vibration. For, thank you for pleasing me. It's always like from this ego. I mean, the, the manners are all created from the ego consciousness. So you'll notice as you become more consciously expanded that you'll use certain words that you don't normally use anymore. like. You'll start to, like I use the word gratitude more mm. um, because of that. Um, or if I channel the word good, he says, well, a thousand people would have a thousand different perspectives of what the word good means. So we don't True. want to use the word good. We'd rather you use a different terminology and have something that would resonate with everyone else. So it'd be the word magnificent or great. And then that people will understand it in the same perception. So everything's vibration and everybody, when they hear a vibration or feel a vibration, like subconsciously, they are responding to that vibration. So there's a lot of, you know, manipulation with, um, with, you know, like, thank you for doing that or thank, you know, and then the person's like, oh, I got to please that person. So I've got to, um, you know, it's it's just you'll you'll feel it now that we've talked about it. You'll feel like the difference, and it's like, oh, I give gratitude. That feels better than than needing you to like needing to manipulate or yeah. So each word has a different frequency, and that's a really good question about mm -hmm. um, how 
the words are sometimes they are resonating and sometimes they're not and just tapping into that subtle knowing of oh I just used that word does that resonate with me and if there are some words that you're using um like I don't say the word you're welcome anymore like it just stopped when I started channeling Saint Germain like it's yeah. it's I don't I don't know why he stopped that one he's just like the vibrational frequency of it isn't um what he wants me to use so huh. yeah it's different awesome and I'd, I'd love to hear from him like some of the common phrases or words that we use on a daily basis that we can then transmute into a higher frequency sort of commandment and and statement as well yeah so um using words like should he, he's showing me right now it's like the word should is a very um guilt uh word um, i should or, go to the gym i should edit this podcast yeah. i should i know what you mean hmm. yeah should or um if you start a sentence with um like um i you know, I want you to do this or I, or like, there's a lot of blame words too. So he's bringing in a few different ones that just take notice. Like when you use it, how does it feel? Just to, like in your day-to-day -day life, like, oh, I should go to the gym. What if, you know, what if I changed it to, um, I could go to the gym, but if that doesn't happen, that's okay too. Then there's not this guilt. There's not this disappointment. Every time that we, say that we have to do something and then we don't do it there's always this disappointment or there's an attachment to the outcome and it's like attaching to the future outcome of of things is a is a big one right now where people are saying okay i've got this plan and i'm gonna do this in the future um and in their day-to-day -day life they're saying i'm in the now moment i'm expanding my consciousness i'm present i've let go of the past i'm not you know allowing my ego to to feed the past uh, if a thought comes in from the past i say no i'm going to be in this now moment but the future people are still attaching a lot to so it's like if yeah. you make a plan for the future the universe is going to shatter the attachment the ego attachment to it so your plans might fall apart or it might not work out the way that you wanted it to because the universe is trying to tell you you're attached to the future so the way to override that is to say um i'm going to make this plan like a hair appointment i'm going to make a hair appointment and for thursday and if that doesn't happen that's okay too so you make the plan but you don't attach to the outcome and then your life will start to flow a lot more because then people are like, what, you know, I went to the hairdresser, I was running late, I got there late, she had already taken another client and it ruined my whole day, I couldn't get my hair done. All because you were so attached to needing that to be happening. So I'm gonna make the hair appointment, if it doesn't happen, that's okay too. I'm gonna go to uh, on a trip down south, if, if that doesn't happen, that's okay too. And then you'll never get disappointed and you let go of the attachment and the universe doesn't have to shatter you of the ego. Mm, I love that. I love yeah, that. I kind of went into another <laughs> off your question. A <laughs> you little went bit. on a riff. You went, uh, yeah, so we, went that's what we a call a riff. <laughs> um, so Tara, if you are open to it, um, I have some specific questions for Saint Germain and if we may open the space to allow that trans channeling to come through um that would be beautiful sure sure so i'm just gonna grab an ice pack so I, there was another word that he brought in so maybe i'll just record that if you want to add yeah yeah that somewhere i don't know if it's um and it's one that we all use yeah we'll add it to your riff <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know i don't know where i went there <laughs> okay so um so another word that uh, St. Germain's bringing in is the word sorry. So um, a lot of people are always apologizing and that instantly kind of shrinks your vibration and makes you feel inferior. So like, for example, if somebody was late for a meeting, instead of saying, oh, I'm sorry for being late, then say, I appreciate 
you waiting or I appreciate, um, you know, I appreciate your time or I appreciate that you, um, I appreciate your patience is what he's saying. So the word sorry, just not saying that as often, um, stop apologizing because as soon as you apologize, it's like your spirit says, why are they making me small? Like, why are they saying that I'm inferior? Because I'm in perfection and everything on planet earth is in perfection. There's nothing wrong. There's no mistakes. There's no, um, like it's only our ego that judges that. So when you apologize for something, it's like your soul cries and says, why don't they love me? So like if you broke a glass right now, you knocked a glass off the desk and it, that's when you need the most love instead of criticizing yourself saying I did something wrong. Mm. And so that's what he's saying is stop apologizing. Like if there was a way to break that glass, you did it perfectly, you know? So, um, yeah, just being really mindful of, you know, when you're apologizing and for what and how that's that makes your soul feel because your yeah. your inner child and your spirit is like that. Um, what I, when I just broke the glass, I did it perfectly. So how could you tell me I did something wrong? Like, mm -hmm. so that's when we need the most yeah. love is when we're we're going to criticize ourselves so really watching how we speak to ourselves as well yeah and that's yeah, super that's not only not only helpful but very practical as well because with words and the things that we say we aren't sometimes recognizing the divine presence within us so if we're trying to command a reality into form and we're using these sort of words that disempower us and that reality doesn't doesn't have room to grow, doesn't have room to manifest and, and be created into our external reality. So I also had a couple of questions for Saint Germain if you are open to getting into trance and hearing directly from him on some of these very important topics that you know humanity needs to hear right now. Okay. Okay, you can you can ask and then I'll just Yeah. So first question I had was why was the gift of the violet flame given to humanity and are there any ways to misuse it? Okay, that's a good one. I appreciate your question. Oh, yes. Welcome. I am St. Germain. We welcome you. We are showing our channel that it is an aspect, a frequency that you all brought with you to planet Earth. It resides in the center of the physical heart. You have all brought the Christ consciousness energy within you into the center of the physical heart. This is where you all have access to this. This is not outside of you. The violet flame brings in a frequency of forgiveness and of transmutation of dark back to light. It is a frequency that you all have access to. This is putting the intention, put the intention that I I'm accessing the violet flame of transmutation. Do this in a visualization. The visualization will begin the f vibrational frequency and you will be begin to see it in your third eye. This is when you are in a meditative state or when you go to go to sleep at night and shut your eyes. It will be violet. We are bringing through frequencies at this time for the crown chakra and the third eye chakra and the heart chakra in today's session to evoke this violet flame within you. All you have to do is be open to receiving, state that you are open to receiving. The violet flame is a frequency that was part of the Aquarian age that was put into the timelines of all of you. This is put into your blueprint before you came to planet Earth. You all have access to this. This There is not one person on the planet that does not have access to this. This would be why Tara sees magic so often. This would be why she can heal 
illnesses within herself. This violet flame is only a frequency. Mm, we are showing our channel that there are many frequencies that would be similar but different. We are showing her that Christ consciousness is a golden or light frequency. And each frequency does different transmutation. It transmutes dark back to light and fears back to love for specific uh, problems one are having in their reality. We would not use the terminology problems. We would say experiences. For those who that are having experiences on their path, they would use different colors in order to transmute. We are showing our channel that colors are all associated with uh, sound frequencies and we're showing her the sound frequencies. Many of you listen to frequencies, sound healing on the internet, on the YouTube. This aligns with the colors that we are bringing through. The violet flame has a frequency. It activates it activates the third eye and crown chakras for all of you on planet Earth so that you can tap into your intuition and expand your consciousness and create more magic in your reality. It assists you with becoming more of your truth and becoming who you already are. We are showing our channel that it is not about the end result. It is about the journey. Many of you are saying, I have worked and expanded my consciousness. I've been doing the meditations. I've been working so hard to heal myself and go within. And yet I am still having all these shatters and all these bumps in the road. And we would say that you already know what the end result is. You already know what it is to be consciousness. You are here to experience the game of polarities, the game of contrast, and the game of duality. You are here to experience the frequencies. When you are feeling the frequencies of fear-based emotions, it is not to push them away, but to embrace them and surround them with this violet flame in order to transmute them back to love. And then they will not cause dis-ease in the body. But if you are in resistance, they get trapped in, we would not use terminology trapped. We would say they, will not transmute and release from the physical body. It is a holding on to them. Do not fear these emotions. They're there to be loved. Ask the emotions what they are needing. Ask, for example, the emotion of hate to show up in human form so that you can have a conversation. What would hate look like? What does it need? Does it need to be loved? Because the hate is on the same scale as love. It is just at the opposite end. It is enveloping the violet flame or your consciousness, the God within you around hate that will slide it back up to the scale of love. It is that simple. It is not separate from love. It is love that has forgotten. It is the light that has forgotten. The dark is the light that has forgotten. There are many that have fears of the devil, but we would say the devil is the ego consciousness. This is where all your fears reside. We would say to stop fearing the fears and know that they are on the same scale. All you have to do is slide the scale up back to love or back to joy do this with the violet flame. Call it in, command it, evoke it, and you will find it. It will show up in your third eye visually. You will see it. When you see it, know that it is working. Do not doubt. The key is not to doubt. When you doubt, we pull back. When you are not doubting, we can connect easy. When you are evoking the violet flame and you are knowing it is working, then it will work. But if you are doubting, this lowers your vibrational frequency and you cannot connect 
with the divine light within the violet flame. You must be that which you seek. I am the violet flame. I am the violet flame. I am the violet flame. Know it and you will be it. And magic will create in your reality. It is all perception. Fifth dimension isn't a place you're going. It is a state of consciousness. You are changing your perception from a third dimension to a fifth dimension as you awaken. You are not leaving the planet. You are not going anywhere. It is a state of consciousness. Change your perception and you will change your life. Uh, blessings. Uh, okay, so was, we tapped in a little bit to to kind of people's questions and yeah and where they're vibrating at so yeah that kind was of beautiful. went in a little different direction <laughs> yeah that, there's a sensitive topic that you know i wanted to be very conscious of and it's that right now humanity is still going through wars and is still going through a lot of violence a lot of killing a lot of destruction on the planet and you know, I've heard from other channelers and, and other masters is that humanity has to, you know, work through these frequencies of war in order to transmute them and overcome them. So I'd be really interested to hear on St. Germain's perspective on this war energy that is going on right now for humanity. Okay. Oh, yes, welcome. I am St. Germain. We are showing our cha channel, The Holocaust. There are many areas on planet Earth going through war and destruction, transmuting frequencies from World War One, Two, and The Holocaust. Ah, oh, this is, in our perspective, it is all in perfect alignment their souls have volunteered to be in the war zones we would like to begin with your perspective on it if everyone on the planet is seeing a victim then they will keep everyone in the victim vibration what we mean by this is if you are empathetic to everyone that is going through the war right now then you have the frequency of love to send to them and they can download it and integrate it into the reality and you will assist everyone in the war but if you were seeing them as victims if you were looking at them with sympathetic eyes you were saying i feel your pain and i don't want you to be in pain and i want to take it from you and you are interfering with their soul's journey because you're seeing them in sympathy which makes them a victim. And when you're seeing them in a victim, then all you have to offer them is a victim vibration. And they cannot heal from this. You must see them as having an experience on planet Earth. Their soul has volunteered to play the role. They are not broken. They are not being destructed because they are consciousness. There is no end to them. Even if they physically die, their spirit is always safe. So instead of seeing them as a victim, if you would like to end the wars, if everyone saw them with empathetic eyes saying, I see your pain, but I'm not going to pull it in. I'm not going to attach to it. Instead, I'm going to send you love from my heart and I'm not going to see you as a victim, then you are offering them a frequency of divine love that they can integrate and the wars would end. But it is because everyone is seeing them as victims. It All they have to download is more victim frequency. Ah, everything is an experience on planet Earth. Whatever you are going through, the souls that have been on planet Earth several times get bored with the game and they want to go to a deeper level. So they will pick a, a more, mm, we would use the terminology, a more difficult game. They would pick a game where they get shattered 
and there is deep pain physically, mentally, and emotionally, but their spirit is enjoying the ride. Their spirit is enjoying the show. It is a play that you are all here. You are wearing costumes and you are in a play and you are the main character and you are the director. And for those evolved souls, which one would call on planet Earth, we would not call them evolved souls because everyone is equal. But in your perspective, if you've been onto the planet in wearing this human costume several times, you get bored of the game and you want to go to the deeper level of the polarity of that which you are. You are here to experience the frequencies. So if you are volunteering to go into a war, it is the frequencies of the destruction and the death and the betrayal and the rejection and the, and the pain, the fighting, the hate, the rage. You are going to all the frequencies that the spirit has fun playing with. The f spirit enjoys experiencing the frequencies of the opposite of what they are because when you are everything when you are consciousness when you are divine love how do you know what you are if you have nothing to compare it to so all of you as a collective all of you as co-creators have created planet earth to come and play in the duality the opposite of what you are it is about experiencing the frequencies and playing with the frequencies and then transmuting them back to love. This expands one's consciousness. And then you would, at the end of one's life, you go back to what you came from. This is why the spirit enjoys the game and the journey rather than the end result. The, you all already know what the end result is. You cannot be destroyed. You are consciousness. Uh, play the game without judgment oh. play the game <laughs> i love that i'm i'm really getting guided to sort of dive into saint germain's sort of purview on on other civilizations because we know that he's been around for a long time and he was on lemuria he was on atlantis and in some of the discourses that I tuned into, he said, I have seen civilizations rise and fall. And I'd love to sort of gather the, the lessons um, that he's gained from seeing a civilization self-destruct, something like Atlantis, um, because many souls are here from that time period, avoiding for that to happen again. So what are his words of advice for that? Oh, yes, welcome. I'm St. Germain. Excellent question. Oh, we are showing our channel that it is about expansion of consciousness, all of this. When we are going into other civilizations, they expanded to the point They expanded to the point where they could no longer, um, we would say, we are showing our channel, the. they went deeper into the ego construct. And in doing so, they created a destruction of their own civilization, of their own fears. It was where they were vibrating in fears that created the destruction. They went deep into the ego. Each civil, civil, civilization that comes to planet Earth and then fades out propels the next generations. It propels the next way of life. It is all about... Oh, it is all about the frequencies and each civilization had their own frequencies and their own journey to transmute and to experience. When it no longer serves the planet Earth or the collective consciousness that created 
the civilization, then they will create an end to it in order to unfold for the next one. This is why we're showing our channel that the planet Earth right now is going through a destruction in order to create something new. You will see it in your weather systems and wars and natural disasters and man-made disasters. From our perspective, it is that in order to transmute the frequencies into something new, something first must be destroyed or destructed to go to the deepest darkness so that you'll know the polarity of that in light. When these civilizations were at the brink of destruction, they needed to go to the polarity of what they were. When you come to planet Earth, you can only experience the opposite frequency of your light if you experience the darkness that matches that frequency. What we mean by this is if you are a child in grade one and somebody pushes you on the playground, you now have learned compassion for what it feels like to be pushed on the playground. You feel rejected, your feelings are hurt, you're physically hurt, and you learn compassion because you would say, I will no longer ever push somebody because now I know how it feels. Now you know the polarity of that compassion. You went to the darkness of being pushed, and now you can know the polarity of that in light and integrate that compassion and when you integrate it, it sends it out to all the universe so that they can download that compassion as well. You are all expanding and unfolding. And as you go through your life, you will go to deeper darknesses so that you can know a greater light. You would learn a deeper compassion. This is the way you learn compassion. So if you're in grade five and you're girlfriend breaks your heart by breaking up with you, then you know that deepest level of pain. And now you would learn that compassion and be more gentle with how you treat others. So when we are in these civilizations that are at the end, they have gone to the deepest frequencies that they can play in that game. They've gone to the deepest frequencies and in order to create a new game, they must exit. We do not see it as something to be judged or wrong. We see it as a new birth, a rebirth. You are seeing death as something bad, but from our perspective, every death is a rebirth. When you are born on planet Earth, you are leaving spirit world to come to a third dimension game. And it is a birthing process from your perspective. And when you leave the planet, it is a birthing process from our perspective. Ah, death is always a birth from the other side. And so when there is a death, we all get excited because there is going to be an expansion of consciousness. We can go into the next level of the game. When you're playing your video games and you get to the next level, you never want to go back. You do not want to go to the level that you just accomplished. What would be the fun of that? This is similar. These civilizations are levels of the game. Ah, enjoy the game. This is fun. Play the game. Enjoy the chaos on planet Earth, but do not get caught up in it. Stay in the now moment and observe the chaos and see it in empathetic eyes, not sympathetic eyes. See it as everyone's having an experience instead of everyone is suffering and struggling. And then you will keep your vibration into a frequency to unfold more, more onto the planet, to create new civilizations, to create new life and new ideas and more magic. Ah, be in the now, stay in the now, and create from there. Ah, I stayed in feeling? too long. <laughs> <laughs> Drink some water. <I'm> good. 
How are you feeling? <laughs> good, good. <laughs> I just, if you stay too long, you, you start to daydream and then you, you kind of forget where you are. So when you come out, you're it's, like, oh yeah, I'm in the Oh, I'm in interview. this third dimensional <laughs> reality. Wow. <laughs> I'm in the interview. <laughs> well, well, that's, it's called trans channeling for yeah. a reason. <laughs> there's always two aspects of me. So one aspect is doing the translation, but there's another aspect of me that's like talking to them or joking around or going into a past lifetime or daydreaming so it's like the deeper you go then mm. the kind of you know the more you get in that daydream state yeah, yeah. what's that process of the translation because you've said that you're essentially translating light language so if, so for people that aren't aware what is light language and what is your sort of physical process that you have to do to put that out in english you know yeah, so it's um, the light language they bring in through the crown chakra and then my brain translates it into English. So I will grab the words that my brain knows the best to match that frequency. So it depends on your education and your upbringing, what words your brain grabs. And then it translates into English and... Um, as they're bringing through the light language, they also bring in like maybe pictures of my third eye or feelings or smells or tastes. And it's like putting all the puzzle pieces together to make the sentence. Now, as they're doing that, they also bring through frequencies of divine light, like through my chakras. So I might be channeling St. Germain and then like Jesus will come in and he'll say, I'm just bringing through frequencies for the heart chakra, for your viewers um, or for healing on myself sometimes or you know it just depends and so he'll bring through frequencies of divine light and then he'll leave and then maybe mother mary will come in and she's like i'm bringing through frequencies for the sacral chakra nice. and um so it's a blending of their energies our spirit wants to be part of the channeling because we're all consciously awake enough to be part of it so a hundred years ago the spirit would fully overtake your body because you're so dense like you weren't yeah. consciously awake enough to be part of the the blending part of the the channeling so now what i teach for channeling is how to be conscious while you're deep in trance so i'm always fully conscious while i'm deep in trance it's just you kind of get in a daydream state and might not be listening um but you, you can always hear what's going on. You stay fully conscious. So like if anybody is afraid to try the trans channeling, like you're always in control, like you're always conscious because our spirit wants to be part of it. So it's like a blending. Mm -hmm. So and then you'll feel the deeper you go into trance, you'll feel their personality. You'll feel how they sit, how they move your hands like Saint Germain always has a really good posture. He doesn't slouch. He's he's very astute, and his personality is is um, funny, but it's like serious and funny at the same time. I don't know how to kind of put it. Yeah. And um, so each one has a different personality that they bring in. So the lighter you are in trance, the more of your own personality you feel. The deeper you go into trance, the more of theirs. So the more they can blend. Their mannerisms, their personality come through. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So. Before we started recording, we briefly mentioned sort of the, the children that are coming in right now um, are highly tuned in. And this show sort of serves as a bridge for that next generation and these children that are getting activated right now. You even mentioned that some children are just directly channeling light language instead of having to go through the trans and, and, and translating all of that. So... I'm really curious to know from St. Germain's perspective of the children, this wave of children that are coming on the earth, how is it going to shift the timeline for humanity to have these new frequencies through the children and through the next generations uh, that are coming in right now? Okay, let's go into, oh yes, welcome, excellent question. Uh, we are showing our channel that it is anchoring new frequencies on the planet. Every generation, every new generation that comes onto the planet comes in with all the knowledge from the last generation, and they also come in more consciously expanded. 
The children being born today are knowing who they are. They do not question their greatness. They feel comfortable being on planet Earth. They feel comfortable in a human body. They are not questioning. We're showing our channel that many generations that are still on the planet do not feel comfortable here. They do not feel welcome. They are always questioning or second guessing themselves. But this next generation is knowing their greatness. They are not questioning it and they feel quite comfortable being here. They feel welcome, we would say. And with that comes confidence and they do not have the humiliation and frequencies of the lower chakras, the dense energies to transmute as much as the older generations. The new generations of children will have crystalline DNA and will have, uh, will have more access to expansion of consciousness. We are showing our channel, one moment please. We are showing our channel that the last generation, the last decade, there had been many with autism and many with gender issues or identity issues. And this is because they're changing the game. They're changing the way, the old ways, the ways things need to be or have to be, the structures of the political system, the educational system, the religious system, all the boxes that you have placed yourselves in that your generations cannot get out of. These new earth children are shattering those. They are changing the way. They are choosing bodies. We would say as a game, when you choose a human body on planet earth, it is to experience the frequencies and all of you create a prison on planet Earth, you create a prison sometimes in your human body, whether it be an illness or disability. And sometimes it is in a relationship with an abusive parent or spouse. You all create a prison. Some of you created it in your workplace. Some of you create it in your families or with your friends. But you all create a prison. And the game is to get out of that prison. Can I love me instead of please someone else's ego. Can I be free while imprisoned is the question. Can you be free while you're in your prison? You have all created one. And so on to the planet comes new earth children and they are creating bigger prisons. What a difficult, mm, what a, mm, we wouldn't use that terminology. One moment, please. Uh, we are showing our channel that they are putting on their human costumes and they're saying, ah, oh, how could I get a bigger or a different experience? We wouldn't say bigger. We would say a different experience on planet Earth than the last lifetimes that I have done. And if I was in a prison in my physical body, feeling that I'm in the wrong gender, could I be free while I'm in that prison? And this is the journey that they have chosen. At the same time that they're chosen to create a different prison to be come free in, they are also shattering the belief systems and the judgments of everyone around them. The older generations that judge the gender identity changes. This is transmuting frequencies because if one loves their grandchild and they transgender, then they must say, am I loving them conditionally or unconditionally? Mm -hmm. And this is where they will go in and observe that and work with that and transmute that. This is great souls expansion on planet Earth. And it is also a fun experience for those that have created a prison in their body in a different way. We're showing our channel that there will also be people coming on children coming onto the planet that will feel they are in the, not only the wrong gender, but the wrong um, ethnic group. They will feel that they are in the wrong body. I'm born African-American, but I feel that I'm 
It's supposed to be Chinese. This is an example. Ah, uh, this is all to shatter the harsh judgment and prejudice that you have against different colors of skin and body types. You are all equal, and the generations are assisting with this. They are bringing in autistic children onto the planet to change the way things are supposed to be. And we would say, we are showing our channel that many of the autism is created from the electromagnetic fields in front of your pregnant bellies. There is the computer radiations, or electromagnetic field radiation, fluorescent lights. Well, the baby's brain is developing in the womb, in the first trimester. We would say for those of you that are pregnant, you could put an energetic, uh, an energetic um, band. Uh, Emilio had mentioned an electric band earlier. This is what we are showing our channel. It is placing the violet flame around your pregnant belly in order to prevent the electric magnetic field all that is required is your intention. You could call in any spirit guide. We're shown our channel, Archangel Michael resonates with many of you. You could call in Archangel Michael to surround your pregnant belly from the electric magnetic fields. And there is also something on the internet. We are showing our channel a product that blocks the electric magnetic field radiation from entering the womb. Ah, oh. ah, oh, blessings. Okay, I gotta come out for a second. Yeah, no worries. I forget what the question was. <laughs> I forget we, what the question they went, was because they went I was like, a... I, I go off. So he starts to tap into the viewer's frequencies while they're watching, and so yeah. what I see is like he'll show me maybe some pregnant people and then what they're going through. And then, so what happens is I lose the question and I go off on these, um, you know, we yeah. just start tapping in because time's like folded space. So he's like, oh, I can tap into future time because it's happening now anyway. So he just taps in and then we just read the, or the send masters read the audience's frequency and where they're vibrating at and what best resonates with them at this time and then he he'll take me into like one person that is kind of the same vibration and then he'll start channeling from there so sometimes my answers mm. that's why they they go on uh like little like side roads <laughs> it's so great that he mentioned the electric band because when i was going into the discourses uh, they talked a lot about that as sort of a protection mechanism around our energetic field. And it's almost like hum humanity as a whole, like the planet has an electric band around it, also bringing through those healing and protective frequencies. So it's really interesting that he mentioned that. And I, also there is a lot of our audience are mothers and mothers that have kids in the next generations and the new generations so a mother is one of the most influential aspects of a house and of of a child's perspective on life i you know my mom embedded me with this spiritual outlook on life and so it's beautiful that we're getting these transmissions for maybe not directly the next generation but through the mothers through you know even maybe pregnant women going directly into the children that are coming in right now. Yes, and he's also showing me that all the kids, you know how there's a lot of children that have all these like extraordinary gifts and talents. He's showing me because they're more consciously expanded, the more consciously expanded you are, the more of your past lifetimes you remember. And they're multi-dimensional, like without trying. So they can tap into different timelines all your past lifetimes are in a third dimension reality. They're just in a different timeline. So when you go into a past lifetimes, it's, it's the same as going into a memory from childhood. You're going into a third dimension timeline and then you're coming back. So these children are tapping into their past lifetimes, grabbing the talent um, that they had, and then they're able to easily 
you know, learn, an, you know, how to sing or something because they're tapping in and channeling yeah. from that timeline. And then when they're done, you know, singing or whatever their talent is, then they disconnect, they come back. So it's really easy for them to tap in and go into different timelines. And they're also having a lot of like nightmares and night terrors up to the age of six because their spirit's like, oh, I'm going to come to planet Earth. I'm going to remember a whole bunch of my past lifetime so I can transmute the dark back to light. And they can do that easily through like night terrors or night, like sleep paralysis and, and dreams. Mm. Um, and then they release and transmute. And then around age six, you'll notice it, it kind of stops. So there's a lot of kids being born and the parents are, are, are upset that their kids are having like, you know, bedwetting and nightmares. And those are gonna settle around the age of six. So it's just yeah. what their spirits like, oh, I can transmute a whole bunch more because I'm more consciously expanded. So their spirit's mm. okay, like they're safe. And yeah. um, they're also showing me that the children, they're gonna start to change in the sense of like, you know how our, like our sun radiation, it like, it's just, everything's kind of like environmentally, there's a lot of children that are sensitive to those um, frequencies of like all the foods they're eating and stuff, especially the autistic children. Um, they're gonna stop eating like that so we have to go kind of back to um Ancestral you know food living. without chemicals in it right because so, yeah. their bodies are like oh i'm not gonna i can't handle that they just have super sensitive um it's in their dna too so if your parents have allergies like then you're going to be sensitive so each generation's we're becoming more and more sensitive to the the frequencies of of the foods and the chemicals so as you expand your consciousness you can notice like when people used to smoke smoking was on planes it was in hospitals it was everywhere and then all of a sudden people couldn't tolerate it that's kind of how they're showing me with like chemicals and perfumes and stuff the same thing's gonna happen to clean up the planet so it's like just everyone is as they expand there you tap in deeper to each chemical and each smell and it's like all your senses as you awaken all your senses open up so it's like you get sensitive to everything so that's going to change with the next few generations of getting the chemicals and perfumes and stuff out of um because he's showing me that every time we put something on our body we clog up our auric fields. Yeah. And so it's like a spray of perfume that just, it's your ego wanting you to clog up the auric fields so that um, you can't connect with the source energy. Wow. And pheromones too, like if you're gonna meet your soulmate and you spray perfume, well, we, he's showing me, Saint Germain's showing me that we get a, connected to our soulmates, um, or you know fall in love by first the pheromones like so the, so the smell and if you're covering it with perfume then people can't find you your soulmate can't find you you walk right past them you know wow so it's all these like the next generations are going to be changing um yeah something with like the way that we like their their physical structure is what i'm seeing is, yeah. is going to be changing so that they can kind of handle more of the like I, I keep seeing like the weather like the sun the radiation um yeah yeah i yeah. want to give people a resource on that because as you mentioned you know a lot of the things in our environment are very toxic and fatal to our to our health and our now you're saying the auric field um when i was in university i did my internship with a guy a, a guy in the health space very well known um darren olean he was Part of this docu-series with Zac Efron where they traveled the world. It's called Down to Earth. Super incredible. Um, we have a couple episodes with Darren as well. But in my internship, I was actually researching. He has a segment on his podcast called Fatal Conveniences. So things in our environment, you know, things in our lifestyle that are convenient for us, you know, think things like sunscreen, microwaves, perfumes, he goes deep into the research and says, okay, although these things are very convenient and they shorten up time or whatever, they make things easier, they're fatal to your health. So he also gives alternatives. Um, it's a great, uh, great podcast to tune into as well. I'll probably link that as well. 
And you mentioned the soulmates, and I didn't want to leave this conversation without <laughs> acknowledging um, Saint Germain's twin flame Portia, and oh, that the yes. way that they've worked together, and sort of how he views soul soulmates and twin flames for us you know as humans here on this earth do we have that how do we find them uh not take showers because the pheromones are going to allow us to draw in our soulmate <laughs> things like that um what are sort of his views on twin flame uh portia the, and soulmates right the twin flame thing is because he says there's two there's a couple different perspectives of what that means to a lot of different people so some people think or in their perspective they're saying it my twin flame is the other half of my yin to my yang like 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 so i'm female so it would be like my yang energy so that would be mm. my twin flame and some people see it as a spiritual being and some people see it as a human being and then there's the other thing it's like my twin flame is the guy i'm supposed to be with or the woman i'm supposed to be with you know so or some people are like oh my twin flame is my brother or sister um, so he's saying that it depends on your perspective and where you're vibrating at, how you'll quite create your twin flame. There's no right or wrong to it. It's just what your belief system is. And so if you believe that your twin flame is, you know, your soulmate, the love of your life or your sibling or your best friend or, um, if it's a spirit guide, then that's what it is to you. And he's saying that's what you'll create. So it depends on where people are vibrating with that. Uh, Portia is a female energy to St. Germain's male energy. And she brings in like a pink color. So it's like sometimes I'll find when I'm channeling him, it's not very often I feel her come in. And maybe it's because I bring in a feminine energy with my own consciousness. Um, but sometimes she'll come in for certain channelings on my yeah. YouTube. When she gets jealous. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she can help transmute like any kind of of um, emotions like that. Um, she, it's very like for female empowerment or um, balancing the energies. Like I'll notice that she comes in. So if for any of you that are connecting with Saint Germain, you can call in Portia as well. So it's like she it's almost like it's like cotton candy, like this pink. She feels her energy feels like cotton candy. I don't know mm. how to else describe it. It's very, very soft and loving. And it's all like heart. It's all like this divine love for the heart. So sometimes if you just need a little extra layer of that, you can call her in with the violet flame as well. Like, so St. Germain brings in the violet flame and she brings in this like pink energy. Um, yeah. yeah, so, and what was the other question? There was... Well, going off of that, when we talk about the seventh ray of this age of Aquarius that we're going into, um i in my research i found that freedom and justice are the yin and yang of the seventh ray so saint germain's energy is bringing in freedom and mm -hmm. portia's energy is bringing justice um i don't know if he has any take on on why that is or this path of freedom for humanity and justice um but that's really interesting um, to realize that there's a yin and yang of sort of more of the prevalent energies that we're experiencing right now in this age yes and all the ascended masters come in with a yin and yang so like when buddha comes in uh it's white tara that's with him and then when uh, mother mary comes in joseph comes in when jesus comes in mary magdalene comes in so it's like they all have a male female energy um mm. and the soulmates he was just popped something in there about because there's some questions like there's some people that are like Am I ever going to find that person that, you know, to, to be with? And just the key is to, to love yourself as much as you're seeking. It's like as soon as you love yourself to where you don't need anybody outside yourself, you're going to find that person. And there is somebody for everyone. Like unless you've put it in your blueprint that you're not going to have uh, a life partner, but you can change your blueprint. So just put it in. Um, I have a video on my YouTube channel about putting new things into your blueprint. So if 
anybody wants to see that you can put like if you if you're feeling alone and you're like i want to i want to be with a partner because i'm tapping in and there's some few people that are feeling that you can change it you can change it in your blueprint because everything's happening now so it's all unfolding now you can add things to your blueprint mm. so if you do want to end up with a life partner even if you have the belief that it's never going to happen you can change it and he really wants people to know that because there's some people that are stuck with well i'm 36 or 48 and i haven't met anybody no like get that belief gone because it is possible you need to love yourself as much as that love you're seeking. A lot of people are putting out what they want to the universe. And they're saying, I want a, a life partner that has this, 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 and this. But where they're vibrating at doesn't match that frequency. Yes. So you need to love yourself that much to be the frequency that you're seeking. So whatever you're seeking, the universe is not going to send you if it's not a vibrational match. So whatever you're wanting from a partner, give that love to yourself. You can do that by working with the inner child. I have an inner child course. I have inner child video on my YouTube channel to how to connect with that inner child. And the inner child has the key to your joy because we're all moving into this fifth dimension game. And the, that, that aspect of our spirit is where we find that joy and happiness because the inner child when we were children, we connected with them. And then all of a sudden we have to start pleasing everyone, please our mothers, please our parents, our teachers, and do things for everyone else. And then, you know, you, you grow up, like you get jobs and you're pleasing your boss. So all of a sudden the inner child saying, well, if you're not gonna see, like, if you're not gonna ask me what I want, then I'm not gonna bring you joy. So it's going back to finding that aspect within yourself that's still young. So, and then they'll bring in the joy and then you raise your vibration and then you'll feel happy and then you'll attract, you know, what you're seeking for a partner. So yeah, yeah going in and loving yourself is the key. Um, now I went off, like I forgot your question. I, again. I love like, those ribs. <laughs> I love those ribs. And no, I think just to, just to add on to that as well with the inner child is I think innately we all know what helps us tune into the energy as if we were children again. And if you don't know, ask your parents because they know, like my parents know that, you know, I like to goof around and joke when I was a kid. I'd like to dress up as superheroes and do things that, you know, helped me remind myself of the power that I had of this divine presence that we've been talking about because children know it innately. So it's just remembering that as kids, we already had that. How do we bring it back into this reality, into this time and play with life? And, you know, St. Germain said, this is a game. So right. I have a couple of questions to wrap up that we ask uh, at the end of every podcast called the final trio. Mm -hmm. Um, the first one is personalized to the guest to you um, that I wanted to ask specifically to you. I also have one for St. Germain and then a final one to end. Okay. Um, the first question I had for you is what is the most significant thing that you have transmuted from fear to love in the past year? Oh, I, I've transmuted the past lifetime of Joan of Arc. That was a lot of layers and a lot of um, heart issues with that um, as I was transmuting it. So as I went through that deep transmutation, it's kind of like you go into a dark night of the soul a bit. Um, and I know people listening, a lot of you have had dark night of the souls. So yeah, I think in the past year, that was my biggest one. And then within that it's like my consciousness expanded um i was able to i started doing interviews because of this and so it was like this past lifetime of joan of arc and being persecuted and not being able to um be seen like i was kind of i had a youtube channel but i was keeping it small like as soon as it started to grow i would be like oh it's not safe to be seen so yeah. i went into this past lifetime um, with St. Germain to see why, why I was blocking it. And it was Joan of Arc and how 
she got um, persecuted and betrayed and everything. So I was like, okay, so in order to be seen, I've got to start a journey where I have to put myself out there. So St. Germain's like, you've, you know, do interviews. So I started doing interviews because that was my biggest fear. And so overcoming that in the past year, um, like being able to do an interview like we are today, um, yeah. where I would have panic attacks and it, it was uh, all this past lifetime stuff coming up. I'd have to meditate after and really transmute. And I had a lot of heart issues coming up with this um, during that. And now it's like all healing and everything's going back and I feel more joy and lighter and more expanded like definitely more expanded more confident um so yeah that was my best shatter this year i always get excited when i get a big shatter because it's like oh everything that we desire is on the other side of our fears and if i want something i have to face my biggest fears and being seen and doing interviews was my biggest fear so now because i overcame it all this abundance is flowing into my life um, that I never thought possible. So when you want to um, create abundance in your life, just look like, where are my biggest fears? And just face them, just do them, do it scared, you know, like just do it scared because on the other side of all our fears is it's delicious. It's yeah, yes. we're here to transmute those fears, not run from them, not hide from them. So yeah. yeah. And I can resonate completely because when I started the podcast, I was also keeping it small and sometimes my ego would be frustrated with me and be like wait why aren't we growing this like why why aren't we getting the the views of why are, why aren't we getting you know amazing guests on and it's because there was a part of me that was afraid to be seen spiritually and and just authentically so when i broke through that barrier of let me allow myself to be seen spiritually and for who I truly am, like over even over the past year, the, the channel has, you know, grown 400 percent. It's something crazy. And I just even feel more and more of that growth coming in because I know that I'm stepping into what I'm meant to do and I'm not afraid to show myself. So I can feel the same for you that's happening right now. Um, that's why I resonate so much. And this question that I had was for St. Germain. Um, okay. It's sort of a twofold question and it goes like this. He mentioned a lot that this reality is a game. So I wanted to ask him, what is the next level of the game for the collective and what will humanity see more of in the future, in the times to come? Okay, I'm just gonna go into trance. Oh yes, welcome. I'm St. Germain. We are showing our channel that many people will be leaving the planet. There is old energies that will be leaving. There are many... We are showing our channel that is to physical death. That They will be leaving the planet to open space for new energy to come onto the planet. There is a shift on the planet with Mother Earth. Her chakra systems are uh, we would say being shaken up. This is all the natural disaster on the planet. This will continue. We are showing our channel parts of the world underwater or mm, you were seeing this with your floods. This is nothing new. This is what we are showing our channel. It is not to be afraid of any of this. This is that Many are spirits on planet Earth would like the shift. They would like to the shift to tilt to become more divine love than the dark on the planet. And in order for this to happen, there are many on the planet that have decided not to awaken in this lifetime. They are oh, we are showing our channel that those of you who are awakening and you are trying to convince your we wouldn't use terminology trying, we would say those of you that are have the desire to convince your family and friends to awaken, many of them have already decided not to because they serve best being the triggers. Ah, how can I awaken if I don't have a trigger? What would motivate me to look in? And so for all of you judging those on the planet that are narcissistic or 
sociopaths or a frequency of lower vibration that have chosen not to awaken, we would recommend not judging. We would not use labels, but we will allow it for now. Uh, as these on planet Earth are triggering those who are awakening, this must be part of the game in order for one to be motivated to awaken. As many on the planet are getting and stepping into their power from their heart and not allowing those to walk all over them, they have decided I will love the God within me instead of feeding another's ego. They are getting their power. These, when this happens, then the there will be many leaving the planet because they will no longer be needed to trigger. Mm, the frequencies that they brought will no longer be needed to trigger the empath in order to awaken, or we would not use the terminology labels, but we will allow it for now. Uh, so you will find that over the next few years, there will be many leaving the planet. This is all a celebration from all the souls. There are souls on the planet Earth right now that have a desire to awaken, but they are here to play the opposite role and be the trigger for the awakening. And so they are excited to leave the planet so that they can come back and play another game. Ah, uh, this is a rebirth. This is never a death. It is only the ego that is afraid of dying. And we would say that the souls that are leaving are excited. They are excited to play a different part of the game. And they are excited for, as the energies leave the planet, then the planet will become more peaceful and more, uh, more mm, in alignment with Christ consciousness. Uh, we would say, if, from our perspective, everything is in perfect alignment. You are seeing the destruction and the chaos as something that is mm, detrimental, but not from our perspective. We are seeing it as much shifts on planet Earth, much frequencies changing, and all is well. We are, are excited with the progress. Ah, oh, blessings. Ah. Oh. <laughs> appreciate you and this question we ask at the end of every podcast we call it the time capsule question okay. and essentially it allows us to travel a little bit out into the future so you could give your personal response and if saint germain also wants to come in to give his response as well but essentially if we travel out, let's say to the year 2030, in between 2030, 2040, and you were given the opportunity to create a time capsule for humanity, and especially for the next generation of leaders, these new earth children that are gonna come in, and by that time, a lot of them will be stepping into leadership positions around the world. So when they open your time capsule, they will be gifted sort of whatever you wanna put in there, um, things that will help them usher in this new age the aquarian age as we've been talking and lead into that era so what would you put into that time capsule and maybe if saint germain wants to step in and give his response um just for us to get equipped in this time capsule for the next generation of leaders Okay, so what I saw first when you were asking that is like there was a lot of crystals. So it's like putting, um, so they're showing me it's like they'll be using more crystals in the future to do things and change things. They're also oh showing me, oh, there's a crystal. They're also showing me there's something in the air and I don't know, it's like little squares. I don't know what, it's like something with the ra sun's radiation blocking it or transmuting it or something um i see them all up and so it's like whatever frequencies that they need for these um this answer is like from me and saint germain because mm -hmm. he's showing me it's like certain crystals are going to start to have different um it's the energy of the new earth children that connect with these crystals and they show me them doing like crystal grids and stuff like that so that the time capsule has a lot of these basic crystals and metals from the earth 
that are going to be used in different ways that we haven't thought possible yet. Um, so, and then these little squares that I see in the sky, I don't know what they are, but I'm putting that in the time capsule as well in case they need something from that. It's like, they're like metals. There's also, they're showing me like some alien mm. activity coming onto the planet, but bringing, uh, they're bringing like different um, elements of like metals. I, I call them metals, but it's almost like I'm seeing the periodic, periodic table. Yeah. And so it's like, some more added to it and so uh, it's like from other planets they're gonna bring new technology in, yeah they're gonna bring in different um elements and to create new um things to navigate like new i say things like new products that will navigate the earth or change the earth somehow so that's what we're putting in our time capsules yeah. anything and then just whatever the universe from any other planets that we could use for mm -hmm. <laughs> um then yeah i'm bringing those in from all the planets that are in our solar system like whatever you can bring like any alien beings that want to bring something to help our planet then i'm putting that in the time capsule as well so mm. yeah Beautiful. so yeah a lot of changes um with new inventions new ideas new and these children are going to be um like they're almost like computers like their their minds go so fast and merging so, with like, ai things together <laughs> yeah it's like yeah it's like fast like yeah. like when i the reason i like trans channeling is because it comes in like lightning it comes in so fast it's so fun um but my normal everyday life like i if the information was coming in that fast i'd be like whoa um, so yeah, this is how he's showing me that the ki kids being born, they're like, it's coming in as fast as I trans channel. And so it's like, and that's their normal every wow. day to day thing. It's like the information's there. They're connected to everything they're, They are remembering their source energy and they have access to all the answers in the universe. And as do we, we just, most of us don't know we do. So um, yeah, so that's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Yeah. And imagine the purpose of the education system then. It would have to completely be disrupted. If children are learning things almost instantaneously, <laughs> imagine yes. imagine where we're going with that. That's beautiful. And I saw something last night about the creative energy um, that, uh, you know, we have this creative energy and then we go to school and it kind of gets destroyed. So um, the create the creative part, because we get put in the box. So that the whole school system's already being changed, like with COVID and everything, but that's going to change quite a bit. It's yeah. going to be more tapping in because the children are like, I know why I'm here. You don't have to tell me. I already know. And they're going to that's going to get stronger and stronger. And they're like, um, yeah, I'm here to create a new spaceship or a new, you know, rocket or something. And they'll start when they're like five or six years old, like yeah. working on their mission of why they came. And the parents will be like, well, you got to go to school. And they're like, no, <laughs> I'm here to do something different. You know, <laughs> they're not going to allow the the box anymore. They're just, Hell yeah. yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. And on the top of this time capsule, you can leave an I am statement that these children or these leaders of the of tomorrow will be able to hold on and express whenever they want to, to connect with that god within an i am statement would be i am consciousness like i am that i am when you say i am that i am it's you are that you are like you are everything so it's just remembering that we are all consciousness there's no separation I love that. Tara, thank you so much for your service to humanity, for overcoming the fear of interviews. It was such a blessing to connect with you. I would love to do this again. And just sending you so much love and blessings for your journey to come and many more expansions for you as well. Thank you.
Thank you, Appreciate Emmanuel. You. I've had a great time. Thanks for inviting me on. Much love. Thank you.